Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be looking at the largest of this wave of LEGO Ninjago sets. It's called Catamaran Sea Battle. This comes with two watercraft, one significantly smaller than the other, and six minifigs. Now I did say watercraft there deliberately as opposed to calling this a catamaran because technically speaking it's not a catamaran. It's a trimaran or a three-point hydrofoil. If you actually look at it in the show you got three points of of contact with the water actually piercing the water and the whole thing lifts up when it's at speed but again that's just a technicality another thing that's a little bit of a technicality is that in spite of initial appearances uh this is not a sailboat you have this sail here which is printed only on the other side so it looks much better from the other side but it's not bad and at least it is a cloth piece and not a vinyl piece so it's not shiny yeah, yeah it's set up kind of nice but on the back you clearly have two propellers right there or impellers is, is really what they look like but yeah you know these would spin up their surface piercing propellers i i suppose how they're set up but i mean that's honestly neither here nor there again just little technicalities overall i like the look of this a lot obviously this is set up for kai with the color scheme and looking at it as a motorboat and seeing the sail as as just something for stability and for for looks to try to make a connection to the Polynesian outrigger sort of style that they're inspired by here. Well, let's let's do this. Let's let's take the sail off entirely and look what's left. It's actually a pretty good looking, fast looking Kai speedboat, right? This is this is nice. This is this is really nice. It's sharp. Look at that shaping there in the front. With those relatively new wedge, uh, yeah, wedge plate pieces that were introduced for the the Sith Dorito fighter, <laughs> Sith Tie fighter. But yeah, this is this is sweet. It, it's hot. Uh, colors are are good. The yellow color is that flame yellowish orange color, not just a regular yellow. And this has a basic transformative feature that is easy to access. You just do this, or you can put it back like so. And I can put it forward again like this. It just separates things out like so. Here, let me put it back again. Can I do it with one hand here? I think I can. I think I can. Uh, there we go. Yeah, see? Uh, I think that the uh, the Technic lift arms there are a little bit apparent, but it's not bad. And they even use the, the red color for the, the connectors that have the ball ends for the linkages underneath. So that fits in with the color scheme and everything. This is pretty cool. Let me put the sail back since that is ultimately an important thing it is key to this as part of it it's a one-seater it's a very large one-seater but we're used to that for kai stuff like just think of his cars right started out pretty big got even bigger uh, he sits right here and the controls and that's it that's all there is to this it just it just looks good it looks fast in universe it goes fast it's very high performance definitely relies on some stickers for those graphics you know that's that's pretty important there but i mean this is mostly just all about the the looks it's easy enough to grab and kind of move it around it does have a couple of or a handful of the inverted tiles round tiles on the underside so you can run this over surfaces that are not entirely uh, smooth and it won't get caught up too easily i like it oh yeah i forgot to show you that there are also spring-loaded shooters there's one on either side the Islander's boat is much larger and much more obviously a trimaran, not a catamaran, because it's basically symmetrical from left to right. They bring in more of that teal color, and Lego's loving that teal color right now, but I'm not mad at it. It looks pretty good. This does rely on uh, stickers for a lot of the decoration that you see, you know, a lot of the patterning here, the, the graphics also here, also here. Not absolutely crucial, but I feel like those do add quite a bit to the soul of this. Once again, it is a powered craft, uh, powered by magic of some sort, I think, on board. I'll show you up close in a minute, but it does have a larger sail that would probably have more of an effect. This definitely tries to go for some sort of aerodynamic effects. They even have a rudder back here that is an air rudder, not used in the, in the water. You know, it doesn't pierce the surface of the water whatsoever. And overall, this thing looks pretty nice. It looks kind of classic, but almost like a slightly modernized, I don't know, like a, a modern take on something that's classic, which what it, which is what it literally is. But maybe in-universe, it kind of feels that way as well. 
in universe, this side hull, sponson pontoon, depending upon how you want to look at it, acts as a jail cell, a temporary one. So if you capture, if they capture somebody on the high seas, they can put them in here. Just kind of gets grabbed between these these claws. It's pretty nice. Ends up looking like a rib cage when it's all put together, and you know just holds a figure that's lying down backwards. And you can also have a single figure sitting right there, and potentially another one standing behind. This side has a couple of stud shooters here, and there's space for one person to stand behind there. I'm assuming they would be operating the, the cannons on this side. And then this is storage. You could optionally take out these two barrels that are stacked up, and then you can put at least two figures in that space, or if you stand them up, you can put at least three there. But these barrels do contain some stuff. They each have one of these purple crystals that I believe are used as one of their power sources. Finally, the center of the boat, the main hull, right up top has a spot for one person to sit there, or potentially two if you get the, the sail out of the way, move the boom out of the way, because this is able to rotate around so you can have different points of sail, even though you're not really going to be using that because the whole thing is powered. Uh, but you can also angle this up and down, but you can get that out of the way is, is the main thing. So you can you know, use that space as, as effectively as reasonably possible. And then this also has spring-loaded shooters, one on either side and they're conveniently located here. They're not able to really aim. That's not really a feature right there, but I did want to point out, you know, one there, one there. Stickers are used on them. And finally, there's kind of an action feature that's built into this. It's 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 excessive in its engineering, in my opinion. This does look quite a bit like a, like a fish of some sort, but notice these right here, these teeth, these swords with the teeth on them. Well, those can extend a little bit, just a little bit. That's a good look, and it's nice to, to have that as an option, you know, for for ramming other other boats and stuff. But the amount of mechanism that went into making that possible, that goes through the entire hull, it goes through the whole thing, the number of pieces and everything. I, I just feel we're not necessarily well allocated. I feel like they could have done more than that with that number of pieces. I like the thing; it just seems a bit excessive for what it is. And then looking from around the back, you can see where the power is. It's it's a magical, it's like electrical turbine thing. Uh, you know, you have to use your imagination a little bit there, but that's where most of the, the propulsion for the whole thing comes in. And also, one other thing, these can be separated. So that can be used as its own boat. And it's got just a little bit of power that comes off the back if you want to bring this fin out do the same thing with the other side pull that straight off or you can switch sides between them bring this out and the next thing you know you have yourself the beginnings of an armada looking at figures we have a whole lot of <laughs> islanders here no just three uh, so this is chief mamatis himself and then over here is thunderkeeper i believe it's is it the thunderkeeper or are there multiple of them and then this is Rumble Keeper over here. I forget if there are just one of them. Uh, every time I show these figures, people very quickly run to the comments and like, Jang, Jang, did you see there's a Godzilla reference there? It's clearly a Godzilla, Godzilla reference. How come you haven't talked about the Godzilla reference? There, I talked about the Godzilla reference. If you watch the show, there is a very, very extremely on the nose and repeated Godzilla uh, reference that they, they make in, in association with what that's all about. And you also see it on uh, Mamatis right down here. Uh, really cool figures, especially the Chief himself. Uh, good to get him in another set. I like that. I like all the graphic design work here. Uh, just generally speaking, uh, it's it's really good. The production work here is fantastic. I think the graphic design work itself is excellent. And yeah, I'm just happy with these in general. Kind of a shame that we're not gonna be getting more things necessarily with this exact same level of quality in, in this style. because. There's so much goodness there. Uh, this is obviously one of those nice cloth pieces, the, the relatively, relatively <laughs> new. It's not that new these days, but relatively new material used for that. So you get uh, two faces just for the chief himself and not for the others, because these have to be able to show the backs of their heads with the headgear off. And there's what everything looks like. Just to clear it up a little bit for the faces. Relatively speaking, the ninja are kind of simple and plain. They're not bad. They're not bad at all. I personally will always prefer the the fully hooded look for these rather than just having the the uh, the COVID masks on, as we can call them now. But I mean, honestly, 
the production work here is very good as well. And the graphic design work is good. Not a huge fan of what they did for weapons for these guys for this season in particular, but at least uh, most of them have backups as well, just your traditional katanas, and those work out just fine. Here are the back torso prints, which look good as well. A couple of alternate faces. Of course, Zane doesn't get one because, you know, as usual, we're going to see the back of his head in his normal form. And these are the full faces that were previously covered. That brings me to the leftover pieces, which include some extra shots for the stud and spring-loaded shooters. This is a pretty significant, I have to admit, sticker sheet. I mean, there are a lot of stickers to apply, especially to Kai's not catamaran. But it didn't feel that annoying to me. To be honest, it felt pretty appropriate for the amount of decoration that we got on that thing. And there's one more thing as well. The set does come with one of these, the Storm Amulet of totally not Godzilla there. Looks more like a just regular dragon. And that's dual molded and a nice piece. I had to pay $70 US for this and it comes with over 700 pieces. Therefore, the price to part ratio looks pretty good on paper. Can't complain about that. And I will say that the price to volume of stuff ratio in total for what's here in front of me on the table feels okay by Lego standards, especially. Uh, maybe not great by toy standards on the whole, but for Lego and for the level of detail that's here, also considering the number of minifigs, how good those minifigs are. Look at the price to part ratio, consider how many of these pieces are at least medium size, like combine all the factors together for Lego. This is, I think, a pretty solid deal. Compare. <laughs> I'm looking at it, I'm thinking in my mind already. Grievous's Starfighter from the Star Wars line was probably equivalent in in value to just this here. To just this. Yeah, it's really, really close. Maybe it had a little bit more bulk but definitely not more play value, not more use. And that was $80 by itself. All this is 70. Come on, Lego. Who do you think you're fooling? And no, it's not the Disney tax. They spread their licensing fees out however they want, wherever they want across the entire product range of all themes that they do. They don't have to price individual sets super, super high because of a particular uh, IP licensing fees they do it because they can, because they know that they can get sales, even if things are ridiculously overpriced in some cases. And here they're just, they're just chilling. They're just putting out good stuff and charging relatively reasonable prices for, for them. And I'm happy about that. Quality here is good. The build process for this was good. I enjoyed the whole thing. I, I was not annoyed at any, at any point. I didn't feel like anything was getting boring. Uh, the mechanism for this to extend the, the teeth in the front was definitely overdone, but it didn't feel bad to, to put it together. Just kind of in hindsight, I can see that, yeah, you could have done more with that, but it's okay. It still, it still turned out all right. The ability to just separate out the, the side bits there, really good. Cloth here, prints, a lot of stickers there. I'm okay with it. You don't need to put all the stickers on if you don't like them. It'll still look good. It'll still be brightly colored and everything. This simple transformation feature is good. You know, it's the good type of, of action, of forced added in action feature that just feels fun. And it looks good in both forms. And it, it looks cool to just do that. I'm just sitting here just doing this and it's smooth and it's nice, you know? There's a lot of good here. So yeah, I'm happy with it. If you wanna see how this all went together, I've got pure build and speed build uh, versions of the assembly process online right now. Thank you for watching. I hope that I at least showed you everything here that you wanted to see to help you make a decision. Come to your own conclusions. Share your thoughts in the comments down below if you'd like to, including if you disagree with my opinions here. Thanks for, for watching. Thanks in advance for your feedback, and I'll talk to you again very soon.